so how I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna be in the interview at all, I'm just gonna kinda clip to you know, points where you're talking. So try to restate the question a little bit in your answer. Okay. And you can just look at me, you don't have to stare okay. dead into the camera. Cool. Like I said, I tried to pick some questions I think you'll enjoy. Okay, the first one's kind of a big one. Um, do you think music is in a good place right now? Um, I think, I just think music's good, you know, and that it doesn't really, <clears throat> you know, you could say, you could look at it from one perspective and it's, you know, in a shitty place and you can look at it from another perspective and it's, you know, in the best place that it's ever been. It's really a perspective thing. So <clears throat> I think music is, is you know, is, is greater than us. I think it's an amazing thing and it's healing and it's therapeutic and, yeah, you know, there's always going to be people making shitty music and there's always going to be people that are pushing their boundaries and, you know, making something that's helping make something that is, you know, just you know, new and fresh and, and um, you know, therapeutic and all those things. So I like to focus on like the good stuff, you know, because the shit has always been there. It was there before me. It'll be there after me. And the good shit is just too good to waste any time talking about the bullshit. And you guys have uh, released a lot of vinyl, every record on vinyl, right? Mm -hmm. um, why do you think vinyl's coming back? I just think, you know, the cla people love the classics, you know, like, the, you know, there's something about sitting down listening to a record and putting it, putting it on, you know, and <clears throat> taking it in that way that is real special and it's you know there's people that are collectors and there's people that are running a fad you know and they're just going with it because it's, it's this fad you know but I definitely think there's an experience to listening to a whole album and I think we've become a, a culture you know of single singles you know it's like a radio song you know for years it was like you know a single and uh, I think the experience of putting an album on, you know, letting the, the first side of it run through and then listening to, listening to it as a whole is, is an experience that a lot of people, you know, who are true music, you know, worshipers will, will you know, be attracted to, you know. Um, I, there's so many people that never stopped listening to vinyl. You know, it just wasn't like a massive, massively popular thing. But I mean, when I grew up, I, I bought Seven Inches, you know, like the... Bands like you know Lifetime and The Promise Ring and Get Up Kids and Coalesce and Converge and just bands you know always put out seven inches and uh, and and records so I think it's just become something that's a little more popular now but uh, and it's cool you know it's like bigger you can like you feel like you have something you know you can hold on to it and it's uh it's about the experience of listening to music I think. Uh, what advice do you have to a kid that wants to start a band or start playing music? Do it. I'm not great at like inspirational advice, <laughs> you know, like if you, you want to start a band, do it. It's like the best thing that ever happened to me was getting involved in music and making music with my friends, you know. Um, I, I, you know I'm horrible at advice. I've given people advice that has probably ruined their entire life. Um, but I would say that music is just one of the best things that ever, becoming a part of the making music and being more involved in it has been the best thing that ever happened to me. And, I'm fucking so thankful for it every day. So if you feel like you want to be a part of it, do it, you know? Well, this might be another uh, bad question for you. <clears throat> what advice do you have someone that wants to start a family? A family? Do it. <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, it's kind of like the band thing, you know? Like you have People's motives for wanting things are, are always going to be different. You know, if your motive for wanting a to start a band is to, you know, make music with your friends and have fun, then you're gonna, you're gonna, you're in for a treat, you know? And if you're, if your motive is to go get popular and uh, go make lots of money and get, have lots of cool rock star type bullshit go down in your life, then you're in for a lot of fucking disappointment, you know? Um, and if you want to start a family, you know, and you're, you have weird motives behind it, then you're in for a lot of weirdness, you know, but if you have, you, you know, you have somebody that you love and you, you guys want to, you know, I've always, I've always wanted to have, I've always wanted to have kids. It's not for everybody, you know, and I think if you, if you know, you, if you have somebody that you want to do that with and, you know, you have that drive, then, then you should 
pay attention to it. You know, you should follow your instincts when it comes to things like that. Um, but again, don't fucking listen to anything I'm saying. You know, I'm barely, I'm barely learning. I'm barely like getting by as it is, just trying to figure it out day by day. So I'm not really qualified. My oldest kid is four, and just because I haven't killed him yet doesn't mean I'm qualified to tell anybody why they shouldn't have a family. <laughs> you know. So. Uh, this is a little side note. Um, so Tim from Good Old War, he kind of left the band to go start a family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you just talk a little, a little bit about him and you know what he brought to Good Old War? Man, Tim Arnold is one of the greatest drummers, one of the most incredible musicians I've ever known in my life. And he also happens to be one of my favorite people. I grew up with him, and I've been playing music with him for a long time. And um, what he brings to any situation that he's in, whether it's a creative situation or a friendship, or just like when he walks into a room, he like is like a, a shining star, dude. He's like just one of those people that just has that thing you want to be around. And um, yeah, I've always, I've always admired him. I've always wanted to be around that energy that he has. And um, I'm so happy for him. <clears throat> and I, I, I hope, you know, from, from me, I know that I'm going to continue to make music with him down the line, you know. Um, there's a lot of things that go, there's a lot of weird things that go through a dynamic of being in a band and the relationships that are, it's hard. It would be dumb to try to describe it to, to anybody that doesn't have to deal, go through it, you know. But um, he's going to be just fine. He's a great dad, good dude, and uh, you know I support whatever he wants to do with his life. Uh, what do you think are your strong suits as a musician? Fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to um, think about it. <clears throat> I, I love making music. I love it well, as much as I've ever loved anything. And um, I'm really aware for when something makes me feel good, when I get those chills from something. You know, you know when you're listening to a song, something happens, like whether it's instrumental or whether it's with the vocals, or everything comes together in a way, and you just get that weird feeling, you know, for just a moment where you're just, it's just like, oh god, it's just so relieving, and and like there's joy and relief, and it's all ha- happening at once, you know. Um, I can I can be really open to that. And I feel like being really open to that makes it a little bit easier for me sometimes to identify it. And I pretty much just try to make as much as I can until I get to that feeling, and then I try to make that feeling happen as often as possible for myself. And I can, you know, the only, I feel like the only way you can ever really, you can only make that feeling if you're feeling it, you know? And it's not the type of thing where you can, like, be sure that anybody else is on the same page with you, but you can be sure if it's happening to you that it could be happening to somebody else, so. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I thought you said this was going to be easy. And, uh, <laughs> what do you think you need to work on as a musician? God damn. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Uh, yeah. I think I need to be more patient. I think I need to be more open-minded. You know, sometimes I get an idea in my head. I feel like that's the way it has to be just because of the way <clears throat> following your instincts, go, you know, is for me and has been through making music. So sometimes, you know, your instincts, you know, need to be expanded and in ways and, and challenged by other people um, so that they can be even better, you know, and I always, I want to get better at, at um, collaborating with people. Um, I'm still trying to figure out ways to be a better singer, to bring more to the show. So, you know, I guess when you say more to the show, it makes it sound like weird, but I'm just trying to figure out ways to get more in touch with what I'm doing when I'm on stage and how I can feel the music and have it be pure and unbiased and um, like ritualistic. I really want to work on just being just connected to what's happening around me with the rhythm and the melody and and part of it and not necessarily um, thinking about anything else that's going on. Uh, Do you feel old? (laughs) Sometimes. That's it? (laughs) Sometimes I feel old. I mean, I'm 32 and um, I've been doing this for almost 12 years and things change your body changes your voice changes your tastes in things change your your things change you know and sometimes I feel old you know I took me you know I feel old sometimes but I, I definitely still feel young in this 
what I'm doing. You know, 10 years is a, not that long a time in the grand scheme of things to have been doing something. And it took me a long time to get here. And I want to I wanna be here. So, you know, I... I sometimes feel old at the end of the show when I'm fucking <laughs> absolutely exhausted. I feel like I broke my back, you know? Or when I hear, you know, something that's, you know, popular on the, on the radio or something, I'll feel like, fuck, I don't want to be that old dude that, that thinks everything sucks, you know, that isn't, that, that, you know, wasn't a part of his nostalgia. But um, I think that's a normal thing for someone to go through. But yeah, I feel old sometimes. Uh, everyone has a favorite Circus Survive record. Can you talk just a very small amount of, about what you like about each record? Oh, fuck. Um, I mean, each record was is like a chapter in, in my life, in the band's career, but in my life. And there are things on every record, like there's stuff on our very first record that... <clears throat> Um, is dealing with me like, coming home from California and starting the band and having my relationship with Colin and sort of my relationship with my old friends sort of changing. And there's stuff on the second record about, you know, the band, like, about, you know, it, it's interpersonal stuff with the band that is, like, stuff with, going on with me and Colin that, um, you know, I listen to and I'm like, fuck, dude, we were going through some crazy shit. And then Blue Sky Noise, oh, man, I, I was going through so much. I was going through so much shit. <laughs> When that record was getting made um, with my wife and with um, my family. And, um, you know, it, every record ha is like sort of looking back on like your journal from that period of time in your life. So it's like I could probably go on and on about it for a long time. Just, you know, do, start doing that right now when you go home. Go home and like make a little journal, write in it once a week. And do it for as long as you possibly can, and then every once in a while go back and read it, and it'll fucking blow your mind. Or have people sing you the songs when you're walking out of Target, sing you your journal. See how fucking, see how blown your mind gets then. Uh, people take your music very seriously, um, but you guys all seem like you're pretty funny guys. Is there any risk to making a funny music video like the most recent one? No, I mean, I think there's, <clears throat> I think there's more of a risk of taking yourself too seriously. You know, there. Uh, I mean, the, the way the, the the part that music plays in our life is very serious, and you know, people, I, music has. There's different songs in different times in my life where music has really helped me get through something, been a part of you know my transformation, and they, it sticks with you forever when that when that happens, and so. Being a part of that and being involved in that and making, making music that has also done that for me, I think it, you can get lost in, in how serious it can, it can be, you know? Because um, you're making something that's so meaningful to you and you're sharing it with people you don't know. And there's a vulnerability in that, in that, in that and it's, it's tremendous. You know, so I think having a little bit of fun with it and making jokes here and there kind of makes it a little bit easier for everybody. It makes it easier for me. That's my whole life, I, you know, I'll make joke to, to kind of ease the tension sometimes. Uh, what's the biggest misconception about you? I don't know really what any conceptions about me are. <laughs> I, I don't know. No. I don't know. Um, are there any interview questions that you haven't been asked or anything that you'd like to talk about that you haven't had the chance? I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, I don't really think about what people, will a what people would ask me. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I guess I, you know, I just, I, being interviewed about your music is a strange thing to me because um, I get it. I'm not trying to say, I'm not, you know, don't take this the wrong way or anything. But like, for me as a musician, like, I, I say absolutely everything I have to in, on stage and in the songs, you know what I mean? And I get wanting to find out more about somebody and I get wanting, you know, I understand I understand it all and I watch interviews and stuff like that. But it's kind of a bizarre thing to to you know, to think that like there's some misconception or there's a conception about you. You know what I mean? It's it, it it's really counterintuitive to what the creative process is when you're trying to be creative, when you really want to get in touch with it. You don't really want to think about what's expected of you. You know, that'll just fuck it all up. So I don't really think about that shit. I 
I'm just happy that you're paying attention to the band and that you're listening to the music. And, you know, I guess the, it makes me happy to listen to music. Um, do you think that there's an answer for music sales and streaming? No, I don't know. It's not my... <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm in the place where I, I just want people to hear the music. There's this problem, I guess. I don't know. I don't have any... I've, I've never made... I don't make money off record sales. I never have in my life from coming from the time that we started making music. It's not really important to me. You know, I like people coming to our shows. You can't fucking... You know what I mean? No matter how many YouTube videos are up, you can't trade the experience of going to a show, being there, getting somebody looking you at the face, creeping you out, singing to you. You know, that's, that's the fucking... That's the thing you can't... You can't, like, bootleg that. You know what I mean? Um, I, I try not to get involved in that whole argument. I see both sides of it. I don't really give a fuck. Uh, what do you think when you see cell phones in the crowd? <sighs> I sometimes I have... Sometimes... It, it bothers me a little bit, you know, but um, I don't know why it bothers me. Sometimes I feel like, you know, it bothers me because, you know, I want somebody to be fully present. But other times I think it actually bothers me because I think that I'm being stupid or I look funny or I'm not singing well and I don't want that, you know. So, um, you know, when I went to shows, I couldn't have a phone in my hand because I was dancing and I was going crazy. Like, if I had glasses on, I was fucked, you know. So... You know, personally, I think it's kind of lame to go out with your phone and do all that, but I get it. I understand where people want to take pictures, but you can't really have that experience of a show and give in and go crazy with your phone in your hand. I see dudes crowd surfing with their phone in their hand. It's like, dude, I don't know. That's why I feel old, by the way. <laughs> Things like that. Like, put your phone away, kids. Enjoy yourself. And one last question. Uh, what have you been listening to lately? Um... What was I just listening to? Uh, Churches is awesome. Uh, I really like Lord, Lordy. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but I just uh, my cousin just turned me on to it. It's really good. Um, my wife puts on a lot of Bob Dylan. We listen to Bob Dylan all the time. Um, Tidal Fight's awesome. Uh, Father John Misty is putting on a new record and has a new song up. It's really good. Um, a couple great, a couple really great bands. Um, yeah, they're the new uh, new Grizzly Bears, really good. Um, I listen to a lot of the same shit over and over again. You know, I've been listening to that new Queens. Of, I've been listening to that Queens of the Stone Age record that came out a year and a half ago for the last year and a half. So, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.